Well, good morning, church. I hope you are comfortable there in your living rooms as you are watching our our live stream right now. If you are just joining us for the first time, we have been in a series called Jesus Makes Headlines. And kind of the goal of this series is to put Jesus in the headlines amidst of all the crazy stuff that we are reading about every day, hearing about when we turn on the news, we we read the news. And so we just want to put Jesus back in the headlines. Now we've covered a lot of stuff from the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem to Easter to last week, uh, the convincing proofs. And today we're going to be looking at a whole different headline. And today's headline is this, Jesus throws a surprise party and the church catches fire. Now, there's a headline for you, right? Now, let me just ask you a question. How many of you really like surprise parties? I'm sure that the the little guys are saying, yeah, 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 I love surprise parties. Let's have a surprise party. Well, you just might have one this week, all right, as we're just diving into this today. But as we get a little bit older, we become a little more cautious, a little more reserved, and we're like, "Ah, I'm not so excited about having a surprise party. Well, here's the deal. God loves surprise parties, and that's actually what we're going to be looking at today. Now, I remember one time when my wife Cindy threw a surprise party for me. It was my 40th birthday party, and it was right after church. And so we, w- we often would go to my in-law's house for lunch after church, and she had all these people show up and hide in my in-law's garage there waiting to yell, surprise, when I came walking in the side door of, of the garage. And so, so sure enough, you know, I pull in the driveway, and I'm walking around the side, and I'm coming in the side door. And as soon as I open the door, everybody screams, surprise, you know, and scared the life out of me. And, but it was, it was awesome. I was just so, so surprised that all all these people gathered together, friends, co-workers, just to wish me a happy 40th birthday. Well, even though I was surprised in that moment, the bigger surprise was yet to come. Shortly after I make my grand entrance and everybody else surprise, my wife brings my birthday cake out with 40 lit candles on it. 40 lit candles. It was like a bonfire going. I mean, you could have gotten a hot dog or some marshmallows and and roasted them on top of this birthday cake, this big birthday cake, as the flames were just, you know, and the smoke is just billowing off the top of this, this birthday cake. I mean, my cake was on fire. And so, you know, it's the normal routine. What do you do with a birthday cake? You blow out the candles, right? And, you know, I got some pretty good air, as many of you know. I can be a little long-winded. Right, no comments from the peanut gallery. All right, so you know, I I, I just like taking a big gasp, and I'm like, <gasps> you know, I'm just blowing this big gust of air, trying to blow out these forty candles. Well, the thing was, is it the more I blew, the more they flamed up and fired up, and all of a sudden there's more smoke billowing off this thing because not only did my wife put forty candles on my birthday cake. She put 40 trick candles on my birthday cake. And so it just ignited the flames even more. And then all of a sudden we're realizing, I can't blow this thing out. I mean, I'm huffing and puffing, just blowing like crazy, trying to get this these candles to go out. And they just keep igniting more and more. The smoke's just pouring out to where all of a sudden the garage is filling up with smoke. And my father-in-law runs into the house and comes out with a pan full of water and some tongs and starts grabbing them as fast as he can and, and dropping them into that pan of water so we could get all of those 40 candles out. Needless to say, my 40th birthday party cake was deep fried, (laughs) but it was on, it was on fire. And this is similar to what happened to the early church. The day of Pentecost was like a incredible surprise birthday party for the church. It was like the launch of the church. And Jesus throws this incredible surprise party for all of those believers that were gathered together in this, this upper room. Now what happened was the cake didn't catch fire, but the believers did. All right. So let me just ask you a question. So how many of you like to get gifts, right? I mean, most of us probably would say, yeah, I like to get gifts. Well, you see, all these believers were gathered together on the day of Pentecost and they were waiting. 
And as we read in the text of scripture around, around here in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, we know that they were committed to praying together and fellowshipping together and reflecting on the teachings of Jesus together. And they're in this holding pattern, kind of like we are right now. They're just in this holding pattern and just sitting there waiting 120 of them is what we were gathering from some of the texts in Acts 1 are gathered together waiting for this gift to come. So I want to start off looking at Acts chapter 1 because this is the last thing Jesus tells them when he departs and ascends to into heaven. He tells them this. This is in Acts chapter 1 in verse 4. He says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for what? For the gift my father promised. Verse 5, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So here they're all gathered together and they're, they're waiting for this gift. They're waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now as we kind of look back, they kind of have an inkling. They're not really sure what this is going to look like, how this is going to happen. But they remember probably the words that, that John the Baptist had said when, when all of these people started gathering around John the Baptist. And, and they're like, hey, are you the Messiah? And John answers these people that are asking him. This is three years prior to this. John answered them all. I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Now here's the key thing. He says, he will what? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and what? And fire. All right, so here's this, this symbolism. The, the Holy Spirit is often symbolized as, as fire, as, as wind, okay? And so these disciples are trying to make sense of what Jesus is telling them, go and wait in the city until this gift comes, the, the Holy Spirit comes, and, and then here's how you're going to recognize it. All right, he's kind of giving them some, some words here. Verse 8, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, here's, how you, here's what you can expect when it comes. He says, you will receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so they're still trying to make sense of this thing, but Jesus said, here's what you can expect. When the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to receive power, all right? And, and it's, going to, it's going to ignite you into action. So it's just kind of a bullet point here. The power of the Holy Spirit will ignite you into action. This is what Jesus is telling his disciples. Now, they don't completely understand this, but this word power in the Greek is the word dunamis. And this is where we get our word, right, dynamite from. It means miraculous power, might, strength. It's the power of God that we can have in our lives. That's what he's saying. The, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, his miraculous power, his might, his strength is going to come upon you and it's going to change you into a different person. It's going to ignite you into action as we see this whole thing unfold throughout the book of Acts. And so what the scriptures tell us is that the Christian life is not to be lived in our limited power. All right, but we're to be, we're to live in the strength and the dynamic, explosive power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said is going to happen when this gift arrives. And so the day of Pentecost basically was a surprise birthday party for the church. It launched them into action to where we then get the whole rest of the book of Acts that, that is often referred to. Some refer to it as the Acts of the Apostles. Others refer to it as the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because now Jesus God the Father, they send the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, to come and empower his people. So what I want to do is I want to just kind of flip from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 2. You can turn the page with me there. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, is when the day of Pentecost takes place. It says this, it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers, this is where this group is gathered together, all right? Believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, all right, this is the surprise part, right? Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. Now, have you ever been caught in a windstorm? I mean, it's like, whoa, you're standing there and the wind's just blowing and you can hardly stand up, right? A couple weeks ago, that strong storm that blew in. I mean, we could just hear it just blowing up against the house, watching the trees sway. Well, here it says, suddenly there was this sound, all right, like a, like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. 
All right, so here is this visible manifestation of the Spirit of God coming on God's people on the day of Pentecost. Verse 4, and everyone present was what? They were filled. They was filled with, the, everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, which are tongues, as the Spirit gave them this ability. So here, this day of Pentecost, it's like this incredible surprise birthday party of the church is taking place. They, they knew that the gift was going to come. But they really didn't know when. You know, it's not like today where we can order something online and we know a gift is coming and that we ordered for somebody and we can track it, right? We can go on the internet and we can track it so we know when it's coming. They had no idea. They just were told to go and wait for this gift and it will come. And when it came, it came. It roared in and it brought power to God's people and it ignited the church into action. And so we see in the scriptures that Jesus sent the gift of the Holy Spirit to give us supernatural power. And that's really what we need in our lives right now is the power of the Holy Spirit. While we are in this season of waiting, confined confined in our homes, very much like those early disciples were confined, waiting. And so we really need to be thinking about what are we doing with our time while we are waiting? Because we all need the ignition, the igniting of the Holy Spirit in our lives to just bring us, ignite us into action as it did the early church. So I just want to kind of look at a question here. What does the Holy Spirit give us power for? Now, there's a lot of things I could spend all day going into this, just going from Genesis to Revelation. But I just want to focus on a few key things here of what the power of the Holy Spirit empowers us for. And so we're just going to look at three simple things. The power of the Holy Spirit, what? Number one does this. It ignites us to boldly proclaim the wonderful things that God has done. It ignites us to boldly proclaim the wonderful things that God has done. Now, I repeat that because of this. If there's anything that we need to boldly proclaim right now and to be focused on and looking for is the wonderful things that God is doing, that he has done and that he is doing and that he will do moving into the future. Because when we look into the scriptures, the Holy Spirit ignited the church into really into celebration, That's really what's taking place here in Acts chapter 2. Now, I want to kind of just show you how this takes place. All right, verse 5, Acts chapter 2, verse 5. It says, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Now, this was similar to when we talked about the triumphal entry several weeks ago. Fifty days later, there's thousands of men coming in to celebrate what's called the Festival of Harvest. And so there's all of these these men who traveled into Jerusalem to celebrate this festival of of the harvest. All right. So that's what it's referring to. There's God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. They're all coming to Jerusalem. Verse six. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Okay, as they're as they're speaking in tongues or speaking in these different languages. Verse 11. And we, says, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about what? About the wonderful things that God has done. So in this instant, as they're, as they're there, they're probably gathered together. They're praying. They're, they're studying, talking about the scriptures together, reflecting on the things that Jesus did when they were with them. And all of a sudden, in this moment, as all these people are in town celebrating this festival, all of a sudden, whoosh, surprise. Here comes the the power, the presence of God through the Holy Spirit resting on them as tongues of of fire. And and they just start erupting in, in just wonderful praise, just praising God for all the wonderful things that they that God has done for them. And here's this one moment where the room's quiet, kind of like that day when there was that surprise birthday party for me. The room is quiet. And then all of a sudden, I open the door and, surprise! And then all of a sudden, as they're there in this quiet room, the Spirit of God comes rushing in and says, surprise! And the power of God comes on them, and they just erupt into celebration and worship, just proclaiming the wonderful things that God has done. Now, what's amazing is in this moment, it just became so disruptive that people come running to the party to see what was going on here. Skipping to verse 12, it says, they stood there amazed and perplexed. And they're asking this question. They come running and says, what can this mean? They asked each other. 
And all these people are trying to make sense of this, this situation. The, the disciples and those that are gathered, these Christ followers, they're just erupting in praise, proclaiming all the amazing, wonderful things that God has done. And these other people are hearing him in all their different dialects and languages. And they're trying to make sense where some of them are saying, look, I think they're drunk. I mean, this is a festival that's going on. But the problem is, is it's early in the morning. And so Peter has to come up and bring some crowd control and, and give some direction here. It says in verse 13, it says, Others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Verse 14, Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Rather, he goes on to explain, he says, but this is, what, this is what God promised back in, in the book of Joel, that God would pour out his spirit on his people. And so what's going on here is these people, he's explaining, they're filled with the spirit of God. The power of the spirit that God has promised has now come. And Peter stands up and preaches his first sermon. You talk about a powerful sermon. You scroll down to verse 41. It says this, that those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. 3,000. Now, could you imagine? All of a sudden, the church goes from a small church to about 120 people gathered in a, a room to all of a sudden a mega church, all in an instant. And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. It comes in, as we looked at last week, and it transforms our lives. And it takes these common, ordinary people that are there in this quiet room and transforms them into these bold proclaimers of the wonderful things that God has done and is doing and is going to continue to do in their lives. And so during this time, as we are in isolation, I want to just challenge us and encourage us that we need to breathe in the wind of the Spirit into our lungs and pray that God would ignite a fire in us that cannot be put out. We need the power of the Holy Spirit right now in our lives, in our homes. So here's what I want to do. I want to ask you a question. While many of us are basically kind of in just locked down still in our homes, I just want to ask you this question. What wonderful things is God doing in your life? What wonderful things is God doing in your life? And here's what I want you to do. I want you to post it. I want you to share it. I want you to proclaim it. I want you to celebrate it. That's what I want you to do this week. All right, now here's what I want you to do, all right? I know it's not, it may be somebody's birthday in your house, I don't know, but I want you to make a cake this week, a birthday cake, and I want you to put a candle on it, or a couple of candles on it, I want you to light those candles, and I want you to celebrate, because we as the church, the body of Christ, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and we need to be celebrating, and I want you to take pictures, and I want you to post it, and say the Holy Spirit is moving in this house, and we are here celebrating it. So what wonderful things is God doing in your life? Because the first thing that we see that happened in the early church, this surprise birthday party the church takes place, is the Spirit of God comes on them and they begin to celebrate and they begin to proclaim the wonderful things that God has done. And God used it to reach 3,000 people. How many people can we reach if we could just allow the Spirit to breathe fresh wind into our lives and proclaim it and post it and share it and document it. Amen? So my challenge is you to just celebrate this week. Make a cake. Celebrate together. Celebrate the birth of the church and the work of the Holy Spirit in your lives, proclaiming the great things, the wonderful works that God is doing in your life. Second thing, number two, that we see that takes place in the scriptures is that the power of the Holy Spirit comes and it ignites us to overflow with hope and joy. Now, if there's one thing we all need right now, it is hope and it is joy. Years ago when I worked in broadcasting, I, I worked with an engineer who would always say, some days you get the bear and some days the bear gets you. And I just know right now as we are kind of confined I mean, it's like, it's like, like I mentioned last week, it's Groundhog Day movie over and over the same day just seems to keep happening for, for many of us. 
and just getting a little, I'm personally getting a little restless. I want to see people. I want to be with people. And it's just really hard right now, right? And so it's just easy sometimes to just kind of let our guard down and let the bear sneak in and just pounce on us and kind of start taking us down. I mean, there's been information in the news talking about how domestic violence is on the rise. There's a lot of stress in people's homes, loss of jobs, loss of income, financial struggles. And so there's all kinds of problems that are arising in the midst of this crisis that we're in the middle of. And if there's ever a time when we need to be a people of hope and we need to overflow with hope and joy, it is now. And I just know that even for me, it's easy <laughs> just to kind of let our guards down and just begin to become irritable, become the bear that starts attacking everybody and become irritable and start squabbling, right? And so Paul writes a letter to the church of Rome. We know it as the book of Romans in the scriptures. And this church has kind of gotten caught up over these these little issues and they all start squabbling over these issues, And some of the issues that are going on is, well, what food are we allowed to eat? As Christians, are we allowed to eat this? Are we allowed to eat that? You're not supposed to eat this. Oh, you're not, don't touch that. Don't do that. And and then they start worrying about days. What day is the right day to worship on? Is it this day? Is it that day? And there's all these things and they begin squabbling. And all of a sudden, the moment they, they begin to lose their focus and the moment that we begin to lose our focus, all of a sudden it's like peace and joy just kind of just, it's like a vacuum. It just gets sucked right out of the room. And in this instant, The church is just caught squabbling over these issues and there was no evidence of the Spirit's power and work in their lives. And so Paul, he he writes to the church, he says, guys, 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 don't, don't lose focus over these things. This is not what Christ came to do. He came to give us power. And so I want to read Romans chapter 15, verse 5. This is right after all this squabbling. He's speaking into their squabbling and all this dissension and stuff that's going on. He says this, he says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and with in one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so then he goes in this section here and he starts talking about the foods that we can eat. That There's this freedom in Christ. And these, these days, don't get caught up on this day or that day. And then I'm going to skip down to verse 13. And he says, here's the deal. He says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may what overflow with hope how here's that phrase by what by the dunamis by the dynamic dynamite by the power the might of god the power of the holy spirit This is one of the works of the power of the holy spirit is to come in and ignite us to overflow with hope And like I said, it's easy to let the bear kind of sneak in and pounce on us and and take us down and start squabbling over all these things, especially when we're in close proximity with the same people day after day after day. You know, it's good just to take some time and go out and and walk. If you can get out and walk, get some exercise, just just the mental strain sometimes of everything that's going on. And God has the power of the Holy Spirit that wants to breathe on us so that we can overflow Not with squabbling, but we can overflow with hope. Because the moment that that, the peace begins to to exit, then the joy begins to exit. And then there's no longer a sense of hope. A sense of hopelessness can easily set in. But God sends the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can overflow with hope and joy and peace. And it's easy, it is really easy to slip into squabbling. And you know it as well as I do. It's just easy to do it. And on that day of that surprise birthday party, when they, Cindy brings out that cake and there's these these 40 candles just, I mean, it was a bonfire, you know, and and the smoke is just billowing off this cake. And, And what do I do? First thing I do, I'm sitting there looking at it. I'm trying to blow this thing out for a moment. It's like, ha, ah, that's funny. Ah. You know, and all of a sudden my cake, it's burning, you know, it's on fire and it won't go out. And so I start squabbling. It's like, why would you put 40 candles on a cake? I mean, who in the right mind would think of such a thing? Squabble, 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 squabble. I sound like a turkey because I am a turkey. 
And then it's all of a sudden these careless words just kind of whoosh. And in a moment, I blow away not the candles, not the flame, but I blew away all the joy and the peace right out of the party. Squabble, 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 squabble. Come to find out, fried cake isn't so bad after all. <laughs> and so we see that in the scriptures that God sends the power of the Holy Spirit so that, so that it ignites us into action to celebrate, to proclaim the good things of God, and it ignites us to overflow with hope. Then in our homes, we can experience the peace and joy. Those, those, give, those not the gifts, but there's the fruit of the Spirit. We can enjoy and tap into the power of the Holy Spirit that we just begin to ignite the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And that's what every one of us need right now. Which brings us to the third thing is, what the power of the Holy Spirit does for us. Number three is to ignite us to be filled to all the fullness of God. To ignite us to be filled to all of the fullness of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writes another letter to this church in Ephesus. And he says, guys, I'm praying for you. And this is what he writes in Ephesians 3 verse 16. He says, guys, I pray that out of his glorious riches, all right, he's talking about the glorious riches of God. He's referring to God the Father. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he, referring to God the Father, may strengthen you. Here's that strengthen part again. What? With what? With power. How? Through his spirit. This is what the power, it's that same word, the dunamis of, of the spirit. Where? In your inner being. This is what Paul's praying for. I'm praying that the, the power of the Holy Spirit would strengthen your inner being. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, it's interesting what Paul's praying here for the church. Because nowhere in this section is he saying, hey, later on he does, but he says, hey, I'm not, I'm not praying for you to, to be empowered, to do, to do miracles and operate in the gifts and, and expect all these things to happen. Yes, I want that to happen. Yes, there are gifts. And he talks about that in this letter as well. But what's of most utmost importance to you right now is that you allow the Spirit of God to move it by power in your inner being. He says, that's what we need to get our self-life aligned with the will and the work of God, bringing our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, all these, these things that we all wrestle with, bringing them into alignment with God. And God sends the power of the Holy Spirit to do this in our lives, that we can experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our inner being, the inner self, the inner man, as the scriptures call and the Holy Spirit comes as we all need it to come. And it's this fire of the Spirit to come and purge and to purify and to ignite our inner self into the things of God and the things of his kingdom. That our thoughts, our words, our actions all line up with the plan and the purposes and the will of God. So that we can live out this life not in our own physical power but in the power of the Spirit of God, the way God designed us to live, that our lives wouldn't be self-focused, but they would be God-focused. And so Paul goes on as he's praying, and he says this. He says, and I pray this also, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, right? Here's that word again, that you may have dunamis, this power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ, and here's the deal, 19. And to know this love that surpasses anything that you can imagine, anything that you can know is what he's saying. It surpasses knowledge. Why? That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now that's what God is after. That's what he's after by sending the power of the Holy Spirit that our whole being, inside and out, could experience the fullness of God in our lives, in every capacity. God wants us to be filled to all the fullness of himself. Now that would be incredible, wouldn't it? That the moment that we surrender every part, our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, all these things to the, to the heart and the will of God and to the wind of the Spirit of God, everything will come into alignment so that we can experience the fullness of God in 
our lives. And God tells us in his word, as the Apostle Paul writes, this, this is what God sends the power of the Holy Spirit to do, to empower your inner being so that you can be filled and experience the fullness of God in your lives. You see, the reality is, is that we're all filled with something, right? We all fill our lives with something. Birthday cake, right? Working, eating, exercising, buying, saving, playing with big toys, little toys. Paul is telling us that there is more to this life than all these things. Yes, we will have all these things, but there's so much more to life than this. And Paul says, if there's anything I want you to experience, it's to experience the fullness of God that comes by the power of his Holy Spirit. So then out of that, in this moment that we surrender all of ourselves to him, then we can walk in the fullness of the power of God and we can begin to pray for the sick and expect God to move and do the miracles and change the world as we take the focus of our lives and focus and surrender it to the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what God sent the Spirit to do, to ignite the church into action, focused on him, the purposes of his kingdom, so that we can be filled with overwhelming joy, overwhelming peace, overflowing hope, and walk and live in the fullness of him. And in verse 20, Ephesians 3.20, Paul says, here's the deal, guys. Now to him, God the Father, now to him who is able to do what? To do immeasurably, beyond anything you can measure. He can do more than all we ask or imagine according to what? According to his dunamis, his power, the same power that rose Christ from the grave, according to his power that is at work within us. He can do way more than anything that we can imagine or think about, beyond measure. And I think our challenge often in life is I, I just don't think we, we ask enough. I don't think we even imagine enough. Our God is a big God. And in the midst of this, this crisis, in the midst of this time when we're confined, our God wants us to think big. He wants us to believe big. He wants to open our hearts and help us to surrender during this time and just wait and let the Spirit of God breathe into our lives so that the moments that the lockdown is no longer gone. I mean, it's no longer here. It's gone. That this church of Jesus Christ will be fully alive, ignited by the Spirit of God. Amen. And I really believe that it can happen right now in our homes while we are waiting. And that's why I want to challenge us to celebrate this week. To bake a cake and put candles on it. And just tell your kids or family members, these, these candles, this flame represents the flame of the Spirit of God. And we're going to take a moment. We're not going to make a wish. We're going to pray. We're going to ask. We're going to imagine. We're going to believe big for God to move. And we're going to take pictures and we're going to post it and we're going to share it. And we're going to celebrate the wonderful works of God in the midst of all this chaos and craziness that's going on. Because our God sent his spirit to ignite the church into action. Amen. So let's, let's celebrate. Let's keep the fire burning. Are you willing to keep the fire burning? I'm keeping the Holy Spirit fire burning. I'm keeping the Holy Spirit fire burning. I'm keeping the fire burning. I'm keeping the Spirit's 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 fire burning. Let's pray. Lord God, as we are sitting in the comfort of our homes, God, I pray that you wouldn't help, you wouldn't let us get comfortable. God, you would just stir our spirits by your Holy Spirit right now. Breathe into your people. Just ignite us with the power and the flame of your, your spirit, God, it, that you just brought that surprise party to the church on that day of Pentecost as these quiet, ordinary people were just transformed into an extraordinary movement. 
God, would you breathe right now in our homes, in our lives, in our inner being, that we would overflow with hope and joy and peace, and that we would just boldly proclaim and celebrate the wonderful works that you are doing in our midst. Even in the midst of the craziness and the chaos, you are so much bigger. And God, help us to imagine and to ask for so much more. It is in the, the dunamis, the powerful, mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, hey, church, I just want to take a moment and just communicate, I think, some very important things. I know that there is a lot of talk right now in the media about soft reopens, um, that, that governors of different states would just kind of look at what it's going to look like when we reopen again. And so I just want to let you know, in our, in our staff meeting this past week, we've just been talking about this, looking at what that's going to look like for us. And we're just trying to stay up on that so that as we get more information, we'll know how to better be ready for when we can open our doors and start meeting again and what that will look like. I'm sure there'll be some, some slight changes that we'll have to make. So just be praying for us as a leadership team so that we can just continue just to lead um, our church through all this transition that we're going to be going through probably this next month. Also, just want to encourage you to sign up for a Zoom group. If you are not connected in, in a life group via Zoom, I want to encourage you to just to take that next step. We're not really sure how long we're going to be in, in this situation that we're in. And what's incredible is we actually have more groups meeting now via Zoom than when we were actually in the building. And so that's pretty encouraging and pretty exciting to see happening. And so all you got to do is just email the church, lifechangeindy at gmail.com. Just give us your name, your phone number, and say, hey, I would like to get connected in a Zoom group. We got some leaders standing by, and we would just love to get you connected with some other people during this time. So I just want to encourage you, sign up to be in, in one of our Zoom groups. And so one of the things I just encourage you to do at the end of my sermon was to bake a cake. And I want to encourage you to do that. Make a cake. Celebrate this week. Take pictures. And just share your story on social media of what wonderful things God's doing in your life. What wonderful thing God is doing in your family. Take pictures and let's celebrate. Let's be the church and let the world know what God is doing in our lives. That the Spirit of God is continually moving among His people. And I know some of you are just wondering how many cakes were there. All right, so how many times, the main thing is how many times did a cake appear on the screen throughout the service? It was 16 16 times, all right? So bake a cake and celebrate this week together as a family. Also, I want to encourage you, if you would like prayer for any need, right after we sign off here, we've got our prayer team standing by. You can go on your phone, go on the app, up to the top right-hand corner where it says connect, and then you'll see prayer requests, and then down below that it says after service prayer team. You can connect on that, and there's a whole list of our prayer partners that are standing by to pray for you. So I want to encourage you um, to take advantage of that if you would like someone to pray with you. Well, I just want to continue just to thank you guys for your, your giving, your generosity. And so I just want to take this moment um, and just let you know, one, that if you're, if you're new to giving and you want to know how you can give to Life Change Church, we have an app. It's LCC Indie. You can download that on the Apple app store or on google play it's a free app and then right up there in the top middle center on the app you can click on that and it'll walk you through how you can just give and support the ministries that we have going on here at life change church or you can mail as some are doing now you can mail your giving in if you don't like putting anything electronically on there you can mail it in i put the address right here on the bottom of the screen mail your checks um, you're giving to to Life Change Church. So I just really wanted to say thank you guys for your continued generosity and in investing in changed lives. We just want to be ready and poised to help families as we got some that have been just been impacted by COVID-19 that we know we're going to probably be having to help. And so just want to thank you for your continued generosity. Let me just, just close us off in prayer. So we just bow your heads a moment and let's just close in prayer.